This is Vision Sunday at Freedom City Church. Come on. This is the movement that God is raising up in this hour. You know what? I'm just excited about what God is going to do uh, this morning. But guess what? What he's going to do in and through you and through us as a missional community. So vision is important. How many know vision is important? Proverbs 29, 18 says, where there is no vision, people perish, right? Right? So what happens is that's from the inside out. If you don't have a clear vision, right, you will perish from the inside out. You will wither away, right? Hosea 4, 6 says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. This is from the in, this is from the uh, uh, outside. What you don't know can actually kill you. What you, what you don't know can hurt you. And see, D.L. Moody said this, if God be your partner, make your plans large. Come on, somebody. If your vision is something that you could accomplish, if, if Freedom City was a vision that I, that we could accomplish upon our own, it wouldn't be a God-sized vision. Warren Bennis said, leadership is the capacity to translate vision into reality. See, if you have, if you have a, a, a vision, you know what I mean, but you can't translate that into reality, that is a delusion. So vision is key. And this, this uh, a church and, and this movement and the things that we do were set up according to the plan of God. Come on, somebody. <laughs> If you don't know where you're going, if you don't have vision, every you will never get there. How many know that? If you don't, if you don't know where you're going, you're not going to get there. (laughs) When you don't know where you're going, everywhere else becomes a destination. There's this book called "The Long Obedience in the Same Direction." I can't remember the author. You know what I mean? But it's about being continually faithful and obedient and continuing to go the same direction and follow the vision that God has given you despite obstacles, come on, despite opposition that you move forward with the vision that God has given you. And for us as a church, right, this this may have been a a vision God gave me in a prison cell, but how many know this is our vision now? It belongs to us, the Freedom City movement. You know, in 2022, uh, 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 some of you may remember, uh, uh, the God, I felt God give me two words that year during the time of fasting that we talked about at Vision Sunday, and that was establish and expansion, right? I sensed that 2022 was a year to establish, continue to establish, and then following uh, a few years, you know what I mean, it would be uh, the establishing phase, and then we would go into expansion, and then at about year 10 of Freedom City, we would blow up and expand to the right and to the left, and we better, because I'll be 61 years old then, come on somebody, <laughs> I'm going to have to start, we're going to need to raise up sons and daughters in this house that can take this movement uh, to the next direction, come on, thank you. 51's the new 31? All right. I still feel, I feel stronger than I did at the age 25. Come on. Of course, at the age 25, I was strung out on heroin, living behind dumpsters. But I'm definitely stronger than I was that. So we're in the, we're, we're, we're in the continuing in the process of establishing, right? Establish means to create something that will last a long time. To make widely known or accepted. And we've seen Freedom City, we're getting calls and, and people are reaching out to us, hey, can, you, can we do what you're doing here in our city from across the country? I can't even, I don't have time to keep up with all the people that are, are requiring, right? Uh, to make firm and stable, to put on a firm basis, to put in a favorable position. How many know that Freedom City has experienced some serious favor? Uh, from the mayor, from the politicians, from our partner church right down the street, Central Assembly, huh? from a, a church in Ozark, James River Church paid off this building, took up an offering. When our backs were against the wall, we fasted and prayed in a little church, maybe not so little church in Ozark, you know what I mean, one, uh, uh, took up a, a million dollar offering in one service to help us pay off our building and, and get the building in order. 
It means to gain full recognition or acceptance to be proven. You know, I was talking to, to, to district superintendent here uh, 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 for the Assemblies of God who we're affiliated with, and uh, Don, uh, 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 Pastor Don Miller, some of you guys that know him. But he said, you know, this is a, a, he goes, I'll write letters to whoever you want endorsing what's going on at Freedom City because this is, you know what I mean, a replicable model. This is not theory. This is not hypothetical. It's a proven model. That, that, that we believe that can be replicated. But, but right now, we're, we're concentrated on establishing, right, on building up right here. And we need soldiers, come on, men and women soldiers, to continue to rise up in this house. God is moving in a fresh way. I believe this is a year of miracles, uh, uh, that God's going to begin to break out like never before. Uh, uh, how many know God's been moving in a powerful way? We've, we've seen... Thousands and thousands of people come to faith. We've seen people healed, set free from addiction, from a lifestyle of incarceration uh, and poverty. But how many know it's okay to want more? We want more of you, Lord. We know we haven't reached the top. We know there's still more uh, uh, in God for us. And times of refreshing are here, and they're coming. And, 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 And this is the miracle movement. You know, March 5th, we will talk a little bit more about our prophetic history. We do this every year and and how we got here. You know what I mean? And and so, but it's just amazing. I mean, I believe, is that a manual right there? I see a man. So, I mean, there's some people, a manual. Do you remember when we used to walk around and pray over this building before we got it? He was one of the church planting interns. Come on at the very, stand up, Emmanuel. Give Emmanuel a big hand. Come on. And then he actually worked at the Hope Homes for a while. But he, he, was, he was a part of this when it was, I was living in the J House. Come on. I was living right down the street here. You know what I mean? And, 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 but look what God has done, Emmanuel. Look how, how God has uh, uh, come through. This is a miracle uh, movement, right? And March 5th, we're celebrating seven years uh, as Freedom City Church when we launched it, Assemblies of God, uh, a Theol- Evangel uh, a Chapel. Right, And then the year before that, I quit my job as a faculty member at a local university to follow God, to raise money, you know what I mean, and, and to plant, uh, plant this church. And there was a few guys, Emmanuel and Tom Moon, who's now pastoring in uh, Florida, or a youth pastor in Florida. You know, so, but would you stand with me this morning? If I just, I'm just going to read, we want to read one verse together, kind of as a stepping off point uh, um, today. It's Acts chapter 22. Uh, reading from the NIV version, and it says, Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Jesus of Nazareth was a man accredited by God to you by miracles, wonders, and signs, which God did among you through him as you yourselves know. Lord, we just come before you today. God, we thank you, Lord, for the Freedom City Church and and movement and uh, all the partner organizations uh, and nonprofits that that surround, God, this community development, this church planting model. God, we thank you, God, for the lives that have been touched and the many more that are to come. God, we thank you, God, that generational curses are being broken off of families in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. Lord, we pray that this vision, I pray today, God, Lord, that the vision, God, that you gave me, God, Lord, I pray it would be, there would be people in this house, God, that haven't already caught the vision, God, but that they would catch the vision, God, Lord, for what you're doing. And people watching online and in the overflow room, that we would be of one mind, that we would be of one accord in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody says, (coughs) give your neighbor a high five. You may be seated in the house of God. This is a miracle movement. This, uh, uh, that, that this church even exists today uh, is a miracle, right? Uh, uh, and I believe that God is going to continue to make a way for us, and we're going to begin to see miracles. And one day where we're going to other cities like Richmond, Virginia, or Houston, Texas, come on, or St. Louis and Kansas City, we're going to begin to see uh, uh, those things happen, right? And so uh, we believe in miracles. This is a house of miracles. And miracles point to Jesus. How many know that? Miracles point to Jesus. 
This is why God likes to use the foolish of things of this world to confound the wise. Come on, somebody. He likes to, he likes to raise up a half Mexican former heroin convict, move him to Springfield, Missouri to attend seminary, huh? marry a, 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 someone, a, a, a Filipino a, a, a par, a daughter of Filipino immigrants from Flatbush, Brooklyn. You know what I mean? In places here, only God could come up with that, right? That's not something you could like plan that, right? You know why I look so young? Because my wife pranks me all the time. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes publicly. I don't know if you guys was out of town, man. She, 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 she was going to court anyway. So she was going to go to court, and then she called, and then uh, uh, so I knew she was going for a traffic ticket. So I'm like coaching her, like, be honest, but don't admit to nothing you didn't do. You know what I mean? And so uh, if you did it, admit it, of course. But uh, uh, but just, other than that, just keep your mouth shut. You know what I mean? And so but. Uh, and then uh, I'm like, it's like a murder trial or something. I'm trying to coach her. You know, it's a traffic, traffic. But uh, so she goes to, so she's like, yeah, I'm headed to court right now. And go, uh, so she goes in and you know what I mean? So then I'm on my way to meet with uh, the Virginia Recovery Coalition. And uh, so I get a call, right? This is the green, you have a call from the Green County Jail, right? Emmanuel, you've got some of those. Cody, you remember those? And so I can, I'm not supposed to answer calls from the Green County Jail because it's because I go in there to minister, and uh, 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 and so it's it's a security threat, right? So the first time I hung up on, then they called right back. I said, well, let me see who it is. Sometimes I like to see who it is before I hang up on them. Come on, somebody, who's in jail now? You know what I mean? And so Hannah Allred, an inmate. I'm like, oh my gosh. So I accept <laughs> it. It's like a computerized uh, boy. She's like, hello, I got arrested at court, you know, uh, 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 and, and so I'm in jail and need to pick up the kids, you know what I mean? So I'm, email, I'm texting a, a bail bondsman, a local attorney, right? Uh, and she's going off, and then she's like, yeah, I, need, I go, well, what happened? She goes, well, it was when I was 17, some guy asked me to drop off, you know what I mean, a package, and I'm like, <laughs> that's believable, right? I can see that happening, uh, someone doing that. I've never done that myself to have anybody drop off packages anywhere. <laughs> uh, any allegations that say that they're just allegations. I did not. <laughs> and so, but, uh, uh, and so, uh, but, but anyway, so I'm like, well, kind of curious. Or, well, what was it? She's like, well, it was, it was LSD. You know what I mean? And, and so I, I said, uh, um, I said, LSD? And she goes, yeah, three grams. I'm like, three grams? I'm like, liquid LSD-25? You could make tons of sheets of acid with that. You know what I mean? Some of y'all know what I'm, probably a Bible or more, right? Uh, that's a lot of acid. Come on, somebody, LSD-25. She's like, she's like, well, it was in, it was in a, 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 you know, what well, was in a bag. It was just some stuff in a bag. I'm like, in a bag? This doesn't make sense, right? But I'm like, I'm like whatever, we got to get you out of jail. You know what I mean? And so, uh, and so I had like some clues that it wasn't true, but... Uh, then, then finally, you know, she knows I get real quiet. I'm texting people, and she's like, hey. I'm like, what? And she's like, you know, this is a joke, right? And I was like, oh, oh okay. Are you serious right now? <laughs> and so evidently she recorded all that, right? So, uh, uh, but, man, it kept me young. And, and I thought it was a good one. I thought it was like it has a planned out, you know what I mean? Took some time invested in the joke, in the prank, you know what I mean? And so... Uh, but I was finally like, oh, I can handle this. So I'm a fixer, right? I, I just, we can get, you know how sometimes, not to be sexist, but sometimes men can be overly, just want to fix it, you know what I mean? And so I was, that was something I could handle. But anyway, so that's why I look, I look 31 instead of uh, 51 today, because she keeps me young. <laughs> or maybe I look 71 because of it, I don't know. And so, but uh, 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 it was a good one, Hannah. And so, but, but miracles and healings, watch, be, as we step into to asking God and believing God to, to, heal, to heal the sick, you know what I mean, is that miracles point to Jesus. So we're a missional church. We're all about reaching those that are far from God, you know what I mean? But we want to use every tool in the toolbox, right? These are, these are to, uh, evangelistic tools, the healings and miracles and signs and wonders, the Bible said, would follow those who believe, those who are preaching the word of God. God, somebody don't like my preaching. Can you believe that? I can't. Oh, she's adorable. Uh, and then then he, comp he commissioned the disciples to go preach the kingdom and heal the sick, cast out demons. Remember we talked about that, the PhD anointing. We talked about that uh, a few weeks ago. 
Uh, uh, and then in the book of Acts, we see that miracles repeatedly uh, open the door for the gospel to be preached. Even the, uh, 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 the, the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you know, uh, uh, with prayer language, you know, evidenced by a prayer language, uh, actually opened the door for the Gentiles to receive the word. The Jews said, oh, well, this must be for everybody because they're uh, uh, filled with the Spirit, just like we were at the beginning, Acts chapter 10 in the house of Cornelius, right? And, and, and so, but there's no doubt uh, um, that in, in a very real way that in the United States, in North Springfield, we are, we are in desperate need of a move of God, of an awakening, huh? of, of a church revived, huh? of a powerful revival and an awakening, whatever you want to call it. We need God to rend the heavens and come down. Come on. You know, Isaiah 60, verse 2 says, Behold, darkness and great darkness covers the world and the people, deep darkness the people, but the Lord will rise upon you and his glory will be seen upon you. Uh, When great darkness begins to engulf uh, uh, the world, right, and and, and the political and the uh, uh, the leaders, and and uh, that God's going to arise upon the church. He's going to arise upon his people and he's going to show himself strong on our behalf. Darkness is covering the earth now. Uh, uh, it seems like more than, more than ever before. More than uh, even as I was uh, uh, in college and my, when, I was, when I was in high school, it seems like there's just some, some sickening and maddening things that, that 20 years ago you would never imagine the things that are happening today. Actually, 10 years ago. You know what I mean? Things that are, that are happening, you know, today. I mean, such things as... Uh, you know, the, uh, uh, changing children's gender. And, I mean, it's just madness what is, what is going on, mutilating children. And one day that would have been thought horrid and been illegal, and today it's endorsed. Uh, uh, I believe this is the year, though, that we're going to see God arise in a greater way upon Freedom City and break out in miracles and signs and wonders. Jesus said, that, you know, if, if you don't believe what I'm saying, believe the works that I do. Right in the name of Jesus, get rise up and walk. Oh, that the church of Jesus Christ would arise with power, huh? That we would be able to say to 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 the leper to get up, to arise and walk. That we could say to the person with cancer that you are healed in the mighty, mighty name of Jesus. And I believe. We're we're headed that direction, right? And we've seen miracles. I mean, this is a miracle movement. Miracles of provision every month, right? Uh, uh, Of course, the Christmas miracle of 2021. But 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 but, man, we've seen miracles every month, (laughs) right? I remember one time we were uh, man, we didn't know how we were going to pay people and the electric, right? And and so then we get a, 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 a I get a text message from. Uh, 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 Pastor Jacob, and he's all, man, I just opened this, came in the mail, $10,000 check, you know what I mean? Do you remember that? Where's Pastor Jacob at? You remember that? It was like in the nick of time, and it was from some bank in Kansas City, couldn't like really figure out, uh, 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 it was actually, they would, it wouldn't allow us to figure out who sent it, you know what I mean? That's all right, send money anonymously, we accept it, uh, We've seen miracles of salvations, of transformed lives, transformed uh, 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 families, uh, uh, redeemed and restored uh, 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 families. And there's no doubt that the new birth, the, 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 the regeneration of a soul that comes to life is by far the greatest miracle in the world, right? Uh, uh, and, and we're a missional church, and our existence is to reach those that are far from God and together with them grow to become fully devoted uh, 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 Christ followers, and we want to stay true to the vision to reach uh, 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 those that are far from God. We've seen deliverance from demonic strongholds. Uh, uh, how many know that de- the devil is real, demons are real, but God is greater? Come on, somebody. I believe all these are increasing as we move forward with the vision that God has given us and we, we, with, we, with eyes focused uh, uh, on the place that God is taking us, but it's also about the journey. Come on. Actually, it's more about the journey than the destination, right? And so, but Psalms 107, 23, and 31, right, says that they went out, those that went out into the deep waters, 
saw the mighty works of God and his wonders in the deep, right? I love that passage because that tells me that those, how many know faith is spelled R-I-S-K? Those who step out off the shore and go into the deep, come on, that go into the barrios, that go in huh, to the prisons, that go into North Springfield, come on, that go into St. Louis, that go into Richmond, uh, Virginia, inner city, those that, 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 that step out, You know what I mean? And get out of their comfort zone. Get out of their pews. And they step out. You will see the mighty, mighty works of God. Those that step out. and and I mean, the United States, this is a mission field. Right? This isn't like you don't have to go to, uh, uh, you know, the Middle East or, 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 or to Kenya where my, my aunt has, uh, has a ministry. She's been there for th- over 30 years. You know, you don't have to go there uh, to be in a mission field. You are in a mission field right now. You are anointed as missionaries, ambassadors of the kingdom of God to reach people in your community. Come on, somebody. <laughs> See, and when you step out and when you, uh, 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 um, I was talking to uh, uh, a, a friend of mine, so Pastor John Lindell, right? But he said, as you begin to, to, to step out and talk about miracles, expect opposition. Expect opposition, right? Because the devil doesn't like that, right? The devil doesn't, doesn't want to see an awakened and alive huh, church with people that understand that we have a kingdom mandate, that understand that we have authority over devils, that we have authority over sickness in the mighty name of Jesus. And it's not about us. It's that, he, that Jesus would receive glory. Come on. That's a good place to clap right there. Isaiah 54, 1 through 3. Watch this. Sing, barren woman. Somebody say barren. Barren. You who never bore a child, burst into song. Shout for joy. You who were in labor, because more are the children of the desolate woman than of her who has a husband, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent. Somebody say enlarge. Enlarge. Stretch your tent curtains wide. Somebody say stretch. Stretch. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords. Strengthen the stakes, for you will spread out. Somebody say spread out. out. To the right and the left, your descendants will dispossess nations and settle in their desolate cities. Somebody say cities. Cities. See, in verse 1, the sense is that that people can be uh, uh, barren in the natural and unproductive because of, say, unbelief, like the children of Israel, as it's talking about in this passage, right? Uh, 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 or because of unbelief or because of sin. But by the power of God, the barren one, the one who can't uh, have a child, the one who is unfruitful can be more fruitful than those that seem abundantly blessed apart from God. Watch this. So being barren in, in back in these days, that was considered shameful. If you couldn't give uh, your husband, if you couldn't reproduce, that was your identity. You know what I mean? Back then, it's a cultural thing. That's not how it is now. You know, I might want to get in trouble with my wife. But, you know, so, but back then, it was all about if you couldn't bear your, uh, a, a child, that you were unfruitful. In fact, this is what they thought. That is a curse from God. They thought you were cursed of God. So, so it's very serious to be, to be barren, to be un, uh, 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 unfruitful, right? But God is able to raise up. Those that seem, that were at one time unfruitful, right? The outcasts, the broken, the ones this world counted out, the ones the religious system counted out, the 11th hour workers in the 11th hour, an army of uh, uh, outcasts, of ex-prisoners, of addicts, of the broken, the marginalized, the disenfranchised are being raised up by the power of God. Come on, somebody. The 11th hour workers, the one that were raised up in the 11th hour, will be double fruitful. Verse 2 talks about enlarge, about get ready for growth, about strengthening stakes, right? Stretching the, stretching the, the curtains wide. Somebody say stretch. Sometimes there's some stretching before you get to expansion. It says don't hold back, right? These are all words that have to do with establishing, Right? In Freedom City, we will continue to establish ourselves in preparation for expansion. 
right, in preparation to, to, to do more and to do what God has called us to do. But we need men and we need women who are sold out to the, to, to the call of God, men and women who, who, who walk in holiness, man, men and women who, who see things the, the way that God sees them, that sees the people around them with the eyes of compassion, with the eyes of Christ. Vision sees and proclaims and prepares for fulfilled promises before there is any proof it will happen. See, when you have a vision for God, you begin to prepare for what is impossible. Right? I remember when, 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 when we almost lost the building and all that, right? And I would get up here and I would say, we're not going nowhere. You know what I mean? And, and, and really would, would continue to, to speak the vision. I was talking about expansion when we, did, we couldn't pay the mortgage. Right? And why is that? Because I have a vision from God. Some people thought I was stupid. How many know sometimes you have to look stupid to follow God, right? And and so that doesn't mean be presumptuous and actually do stupid things. But if you have a vision from God, we follow it. And we, as as a community here at Freedom City, we do have a vision from God. Those that have been around a while know for certain that is true. Uh, 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 So people might think you're crazy. They thought Noah was crazy. He was building a boat in preparation for a flood. And it had never rained. Did you know that? It had actually never rained. You know what I mean? So they're like, water from the sky? That's never happened. You know what I mean? (laughs) A church planting movement out of North Springfield? I don't think so. (laughs) But I have still, and I always believe that God is raising up an army off of prison yards and college campuses that will go across this land and preach the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ with signs and wonders following. So we will continue to establish. We are uh, built to last. Come on. We're going to be stretched, and we're, but we're not going to hold back because we know one day we're spreading to the right and we're spreading to the left, right? Uh, uh, and the Freedom City offspring will inherit the, 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 the desolate cities of the United States of America. We will rebuild, revive, and restore the desolate and forlorn cities. Come on, somebody. Who's ready to rebuild, revive, and restore? Watch this. Our vision is to reach people far from God and transform cities with the hope of Jesus Christ in order to grow together as committed Christ followers. We reach the one. We grow the one. We serve the one. We feed the one. And we seek the one. Our mission is to evangelize and disciple the hurting and marginalized with the hope of Jesus Christ through outreach, residential recovery homes, recovery community centers, worship gatherings, and to plant life-giving churches in cities across the nation to put our stake in the ground by purchasing and rehabilitating dilapidated properties and starting kingdom social enterprises, businesses, uh, to support the work of God. Come on, somebody. So this is an urban church planting uh, movement, a community development uh, model that was given to me in seed form uh, in a lonely prison cell many years ago when God restored my calling and set me free of addiction. And he did speak to me about an army that he was raising up out of prisons and, 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 and college campuses. Come on. He, he talked about an army of the broken uh, uh, that would raise up in these last days. I even would see, like, I've been a student of revival for, for, for since I got saved, you know. But in the Argentine revival, you know what I mean, with Carlos Anacondia. Right? They had the stadiums were filled up and people would, 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 would come in. They would drive hearses in. And people would get get healed, right? Within a mile radius of the stadiums where they were at, people that were, were, were possessed by demons would fall down, get delivered and fall down because the presence of God just, just around the stadiums where they were meeting was so powerful. That's heavy stuff, right? It, and it was, it was actually a, a vid, vid, uh, on TV, right? That's why I'm just encouraged by what's going on at Asbury, Right, and it's spreading to other universities. May it spread to Evangel. Come on, uh, uh, Nathaniel, we got to get this going at Evangel University. Come on, give it up for Nathaniel. Go ahead, Nathaniel, stand up. Lead singer of Led Zeppelin, everybody. <laughs> Love you guys. He's awesome. 
Uh, uh, and, and so, and we're seeing it in, in prisons, right? The, uh, uh, we're seeing God move uh, uh, in a powerful way in the prisons. Uh, I mean, just since last year, the end of last year, we've had over 300,000 views on the, on the app, 885 salvations, right? There's over 7,000 people in the online prison uh, uh, campus. And so we're a missional community that God has raised up for such a time as this. And I believe that one day we will see freedom cities across the country, uh, in the urban centers across the country. Come on, somebody. You know, and we are just, uh, 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 we're, like, uh, 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 we're like the Marines of the church. How many know the church is big, the kingdom is bigger, right? And, and, and we're, we're, we're a little part, you know what I mean, a little, a little part of the big picture of what God is doing, but we have a specific purpose. Right, to go into the hard-to-reach places, right? We're like a, 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 you know what I mean, a surgical knife that we're going to go in and we're going to see people healed. We have an anointing to see people broke free uh, 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 of the chains of addiction, yeah. of incarceration. Come on. And so uh, I'm just excited, you know what I mean, about our little part in the big picture of even the assemblies of God, of, uh, of the church at large, and of the kingdom, right? That's a very, a very important, a very strategic part, because the enemy has taken over the urban centers, which are now are the places of influence and power, right? But what if we went back into cities like New York City, like, come on, back into London, England, went back into the, the, the cities, and we saw them turned upside down for the honor and glory of Jesus Christ. It would, it would change the culture. It would change the culture. But we can't do it alone. How many know this is a God-sized vision? Uh, according to Isaiah 58, victory and fasting, prayer, speaking in tongues, other spiritual disciplines and gifts, being effective is dependent on how we treat the broken and the marginalized of society. Right? All, all other stuff is worthless if we don't love our neighbor. Everything else, if, if we don't love the broken, come on, somebody. Yeah, that's a good place to clap. If we don't love our neighbor. <laughs> the first part of Isaiah 58 is the chapter on true fasting, which many of you know. Uh, the people will ask, why isn't our Christianity working? Why is my fasting not working? Why is my laying in sackcloth and ashes? You know, I, I'm praying, but I'm not getting any results and the Lord responds in saying it's not about religious uh, jargon or rituals, just putting on sackcloth and ashes and continuing to forget about those in need. Isn't that amazing? In Matthew chapter 25, the way we treat the homeless, the prisoner, the immigrant, huh, the hungry and naked is the way that we are treating Jesus. Right. That's, some, that's some powerful stuff right there. If you're not willing to go to a church where there happens to be some people that have been in addiction or have been divorced or have been broken or, uh, you know what I mean, then you really are, aren't seeing the world the way that Jesus sees it. Right. Isaiah 58, 5 through 8. Is this the kind of fast I have chose only a day for people to humble themselves? Is it just for bowing one's head like a reed and lying in sackcloth and ashes? Is this what you call a fast? A day acceptable to the Lord. Is not this the kind of fasting I have chosen? Watch this. To loose the chains of injustice, to untie the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free, to break every yoke. Is it not to share your food with the hungry, to provide the poor and wanderer with shelter, when you see the naked, to clothe them and not to turn away from your own flesh and blood? Don't turn away from your parents when they get older. Come on, mama. We're with you, mom. We're with you. <laughs> How to treat people without homes. How to retreat returning citizens, the formerly incarcerated. How to treat the currently incarcerated. Isn't it interesting that Jesus addresses that, that God addresses that. Then your righteousness, watch this. Then your light will break forth like the dawn. Your healing will appear quickly. Then your righteousness will go before you and the glory of the Lord will be your rear guard. This chapter goes on to speak of spending ourselves on behalf of the oppressed and the hungry. Those that are spiritually hungry, but those who are actually physically hungry as well. Oppressed are those that are uh, 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 oppressed by the devil, sin, sickness, trauma, right? Feeding the hungry, clothing the naked, visiting prisoners. If we do these things, there are some very specific promises for us. It says that, watch this, it says our light will rise in darkness. It says your night will become like the noonday sun. 
The Lord will guide you and satisfy your needs. He will strengthen you. Your healing will come quickly. You will be like a well-watered garden. You will find your joy in the Lord, and he will cause you to ride on the heights of the land, to feast on your inheritance and the promises of God. Wow, isn't that amazing? To those that minister to the broken, to the hurting, the marginalized, the oppressed, God will do some pretty amazing things on your behalf. Because watch this, God cares about the poor. He cares about the disenfranchised. This next verse is very dear to my heart. During my last year in prison, after the Lord had met me and restored my, my calling and uh, 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 restored the joy of my salvation, I went on to pastor the, the inmate church and was taking undergraduate courses through Global University, uh, uh, which is actually right here in Springfield, doing, doing courses in prison. And so during the last year at the New Mexico Department of Corrections, they would allow you to have uh, a family trailer. We call, they had trailer visits. So it's literally like a little trailer, right? And you could have it. So if you were married, you could have uh, a, a conjugal visit, right? And so, but if you weren't married, you could have your family or immediate family come in, right? P uh, parents or, or children, right? And so uh, I wasn't married at the time like I am now to my beautiful wife, Hannah. Come on, she was rocking it today. Her and Rachel, too, man. <laughs> Maddie, come on. Tammy. Sam, Nathaniel, see, that's the problem when you start saying names, right? So, man, they did amazing. Let's give the worship team a big hand. Let's give them a hand. The first trailer visit I had for, with my dad, May 2nd, 2009, and, you know, he and my mom uh, prayed me into the kingdom. They didn't, they didn't give up on me. But I said, Dad, you look tired. You look, man, he had rent, eyes all, you know, just, uh, uh, you look bad. You know what I mean? It looked like he'd been partying all night. You know what I mean? I was like, you look horrible, Dad. You know, he, I'm sure he wasn't partying. But uh, I said, Dad, you look a mess. And he said, I've not been able to sleep all night. God kept me up. And he gave me Isaiah chapter 8, 58, 18, 8 through 14 for you, but especially Isaiah 58, 12. So there's a note. I still have the Bible that's been rebound many times that I had in prison. Uh, and there on the margins of this uh, a Bible right, uh, that I had in prison, which I, I actually use for Bible stuff, for sermon prep still. Right, and, and uh, uh, I had it, you know, marked down in the margins the, the day uh, that, that my dad came in and gave me that word. But it says, of the group of people that does this, that cares and loves for the mar marginalized and broken, it says this in Isaiah 58, 12. Your people, right, those from among you, will rebuild the ancient ruins and will raise up the age-old foundations. They will be called repairer of broken walls. They will be called restorer of streets with dwellings. Another version says restorer of streets with homes, right? So this is where we get our mantra, rebuild, revive, restore. You know, look at, the, look at the folk and the families and the individuals that God has redeemed and restored right here uh, uh, in the house today. You know, I mean, we look at uh, Andrew and Brianna, Jason and Tracy Pratt. We get, you know, Z uh, Zach and Emily Rogers and uh, Tina Stout and her armor, army of women warriors. Come on. Uh, uh, next week, we're going to have more graduates. You know, we got Nicholas and Tommy. I mean, there's so many people that have been reached. Uh, uh, through this work, right? And we're going to have recovery home graduations. I think it's the, I think we have five, five or six. There were six and then five, I think, something like that. Next week, we, uh, uh, so it's going to be a powerful time, right? The, the recovery uh, uh, homes graduation weekend, right? God is moving. Now, these individuals and families that God uh, 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 is using us to reach, right? They're, they're being rebuilt. Families are being restored. And they're going on to reach others that find themselves in the place that they once were. Yeah. We have people rising up that are reached through uh, our, our ministry and programs, but we also have people that, that God is bringing in from the outside. We have people that are coming in to partner from the banking uh, our world, from the medical world, business, real estate world, uh, uh, people on the boards, the academic world, people whose hearts that God has touched to get behind this work. 
Isaiah 58 talks about the blessings of those who spend their lives on behalf of the broken and the hurting. When, it, when, when, you're, when you're willing to, to, to give and give and serve and serve, even people have no way to repay you. Then God will repay you. Amen. Then God, your light will shine in darkness. Come on. You'll be like a well-watered garden, huh? That's better than serving someone that can pay you. Am I right? When God gives someone a vision, he also inspires the right people to be raised up to get behind the cause. The Freedom City Church and Movement is a God-inspired vision, and many have come alongside to join us and see the vision uh, move forward. You know, in fact, last week, I, uh, I was gone last week uh, when my wife pranked me and uh, was meeting with, with Don Wilkerson. And uh, if you guys, some of you guys may not know him, but that's the brother of David Wilkerson, the founder of Adult and Teen Challenge and uh, Times Square Church. And uh, he had been reaching out to me, and uh, I've known him for, for years. He's, he, David Wilkerson was the pastor to my pastor, Sonny Argonzoni. Uh, uh, out of Los Angeles, and so uh, I was over there, and uh, 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 you know, we we did a video, and uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, regarding an email that he sent me, a letter that he sent me, and he really he said, hey, what you're doing at Freedom City is has been the missing link for Adult and Teen Challenge since the beginning. That's why we see people get out and fall away. Right, and, and so having a community that people can can be a part of it, and we'll have the we'll have the the, the video shortly. We're going to show it. I'm actually speaking at the Church Multiplication Network conference. We'll have the that for all the church planners and the Assemblies of God, and then uh, uh, we'll play it there, and then at the Hope Homes uh, banquet. But listen, so I mean, 14 years ago, 15 years ago, if you would have told me that Don Wilkerson was going to call me and ask for advice on recovery ministry, I would have thought you were crazy, right? I mean, that was the, they were the pastor to my pastor, you know what I mean? And so uh, I had a deep respect for, for my pastor and definitely for his pastor. Come on, somebody. And so, but, uh, 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 but now, you know what I mean? It seems normal. It, it, just, it just makes sense, right? Because we have consistently followed the vision that God has given us and God is bringing reinforcements from the outside, right? He said, if you raise up a Freedom City Movement Advisory Board, he said, I, I would love to be on it or do whatever I can to help you. I said, are you a good fundraiser? Come on, somebody. <laughs> he, he said, I'm all right. I said, okay, let's do it. In December 2021, when Pastor John Lindell, uh, one of the largest churches in the country uh, uh, in, Oza uh, in Ozark, uh, Missouri, stood up and said, Springfield needs Freedom City Church. Let's raise the money to pay off their building. And what a miracle. God, come on, that's a good place to clap. God is raising up advocates and strategic partners to get behind this work. You know, when I was going to plant this church, and we'll talk more about this on March 5th, but when I was going to plant this uh, church, it was hard to get people. I don't really fit the mold for a Southern Missouri uh, Assemblies of God pastor. You know what I mean? I, I got, I got the area code tattooed on the back of my neck. You know what I'm saying? So I just doesn't really fit in. You know what I mean? Half Mexican. And so, but uh, 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 what, what has happened, what has happened is I just continued to be faithful. But when I felt God, I wrote a prospectus on this church plant in North Springfield. You know what I mean? And, and uh, was trying to get support from the local district. And, uh, you know, and they're like, who's this guy with all these big, the big, you got a lot of big talks, son. And I was like, yeah, you know, I think it's a bit, God, bitch. I think it's a vision from God, you know what I mean? And so, uh, uh, but I ended up talking to my pastor, Sonny Argonzoni in L.A., and, and Victory Outreach said, well, we'll support you. We'll send laborers. And I thought, well, here we go. Remember, Hannah? I was like, that's it. Here we go. You know what I mean? And then, so I talked to uh, uh, Pastor Jim, who used to be the general secretary, and I'm like, can I get dual credentials or what? I already, you know, because you have to be credentialed with, with Victory Outreach to, uh, um, to do it. And I had given them up to become a uh, credential with the Assemblies of God, uh, and uh, so I was talking to him, Pastor Jim Bradford's very uh, uh, democratic, and uh, so he just said, well, let's talk about it, and I said, well, I got precedent, because uh, uh, Matthew Barnett, you know, has dual credit, but anyway, and so uh, he has four square and AZ, you know, but I'm not a Matthew Barnett, come on, somebody, or, I, you know, and so uh, I was going to do that, and I talked to a few mentors, presidents of the uh, uh, Assemblies of God Theological Seminary, they said, we feel like you're to be a part of the Assemblies of God, Victory Outreach was a part of your past, right, and I said, I feel like God's called me to do this, and I don't care which vehicle he uses, 
right? And so, uh, but then I prayed about it, and the Lord said, I've called you to make a difference in the assemblies of God, you know, in the, and, and so, uh, come on. One of the most difficult calls I ever had to do was to call my spiritual father and tell him that I was not going to be, uh, be with them anymore, you know, and so, very, very difficult call, but how I many, we got to, we got to follow God, we got to obey God. Right, and so God is has raised up advocates, and to see, you know, uh, uh, has given me somewhat of a platform, you know, in our movement, and actually even the recovery community nationally. Uh, and so, but 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 the thing of it is, is the nexus of this whole movement, right, is Freedom City Church, right? Uh, uh, that's the heart. Uh, of the community development, of the transformation model, is the church. Because, listen to me, I believe that Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. He didn't say, I will build a nonprofit and the gates of hell. He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. See, the church should be the answer to poverty, to mass incarceration, to injustice, to uh, 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 racial injustice, to addiction, to brokenness. The church has the answer. When what you do is connected to the local church, you will see God begin to move if, if, if you're doing according to his plan. In 1 Samuel 10, 26, it says, When Paul returned to his home in Gibeah, a group of people whose hearts God had touched went with him. See, the thing is, God raises up men and women, and then he also raises up other people, right, that, 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 that come alongside, right? That's why I said this was my vision, now it's our vision. Yeah. This, belong, this, belongs, this belongs to us, and God has touched hearts. You know what I mean? To bring people right here uh, 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 to Freedom City Church to, to lock arms with us. Thank God, Lord, for Pastor Matt Huffman and his family. Come on, to joining us. We went out to eat about a year ago. He goes, I just, we got, kind of like got stuck after seminary in Springfield, you know, and just, uh, I feel like God has us here. We don't know what's up. And I said, huh, God has a plan for your life, and so do, and so do I. <laughs> so we're glad that they're here. Isaiah 61, 1 through 3. I'm coming to a close, everybody. Uh, Isaiah 61, 1 through 3 says, The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is upon me, for the Lord has anointed me. Somebody say anointed. Anointed. To bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to comfort the brokenhearted and to proclaim that captives will be released, that prisoners will be freed. He has sent me to tell those who mourn that the time of the Lord's favor has come, and with it the day of anger against their enemies. To all who mourn in Israel, he will give a crown of beauty for ashes, a joyous blessing instead of mourning, festive praise instead of despair. In their righteousness, they will be like great oaks that the Lord has planted for his glory. This goes on in the New Testament. It is quoted by Jesus, right, Uh, 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 as his mandate, as his mission. Isaiah 61, 1 through 3, we see that, 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 that the word is talking about certain things for a certain group of people. It's talking about good news to the poor, right. comfort for the broken, release for captives. Captives are those that are captive because of other people's sins, trauma. Freedom for prisoners, those that are captives because of their personal sin, right? The depressed, those who mourn. He will give beauty for ashes and blessing for mourning. He will turn things around. Come on. He will make those that were broken, watch this, into oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord. He will make the broken into solid oaks in the house of God, those he planted for his glory. Watch this, just the next verse, 61.4. Don't miss this. Watch this. It says they. Everybody say they. They. They will rebuild the ancient ruins, repairing cities. Somebody say cities. Cities. Destroyed long ago. They will revive them. Somebody say revive. Revive. Though they have been deserted for many generations. Who is the they that will rebuild and revive and restore? But those that one through three were broken. Those in uh, one through three that were oppressed, that, 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 that were in mourning, that were oppressed and depressed. 
that were crushed, that were broken, that God will raise them up and they will become oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, and they will go into the urban centers of the United States of America, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, bringing a message of hope to the urban centers. And we are going to see revival spread to the urban centers. We are going to begin to see a change in the culture because of what God is doing in the city. <coughs> that should be excited. That should be exciting, right? The broken, the prisoners, the captive, the depressed, those set free by Jesus are going to become these oaks of righteousness. They're going to go into the cities. They're going to go into the urban centers, right? And according to Isaiah 58, watch this. These are key verses for, for, for our movement, right? But Isaiah 58, there's another group that God will call to come be a part. Huh? Come on. I thank God for Jason Jakes and, you know, and Melissa. Come on. That have come and been a part for people that Tim and Tim and uh, Tim, the Hudnalls. Come on. That went for, the, for the Griffiths. I mean, you know what I mean? For the, now I got to say everybody's name. Come on. Thank God for Pastor Tim and Tammy. Come on. And Maddie. Well, she has a pretty cool shirt. I told her, you have a cool shirt. I said, that looks like something Hannah, my wife Hannah would wear. She goes, it's vintage. I go, there you go. Right? And then look. Now look at them. They both have the... Tam, uh, let me get Maddie and Hannah, if you could stand up with your vintage uh, shirts. Those are nice. My wife loves when I do that. Uh-oh, Margie said stand up, y'all. Look at those shirts, y'all. Come on, that's cool. Whenever I call my wife out in church, later on she always tells me, I love that you do that. That makes me feel really comfortable. Thank you. Something like that. Convicts, addicts, the broken, uh, gang members, prostitutes, come on, single mamas, crack dealers, come on. We got crack, de ex crack dealers and prostitutes on the front row today, come on. We got people that be gang members on the front row today. We got, you know what I mean, police officers on the front row. Come on, somebody, come on. We got journalists on the front row. We have people that are coming together to be a part of the missional community. And who better to go back into the urban centers to the desolate cities than those that have come out of there? Because they speak the language. Because they, they, they've been where they're at. Come on, somebody. Because people can look at them and say, I know you when you were in prison. I know you when you were depressed and oppressed. But look what God has done. God is the God of the city, and we are the Marines on the front line that are going back to the places that everyone else has deserted. We go in deep behind enemy lines to pull souls uh, out of the clutches of the pit of hell. Yes. The broken are key to revival in cities, right? The broken are key to restoration. The broken build best because they are so grateful for their own restoration. He or she that has been forgiven much loves much. Luke 7, 47. Come on. That is the jet plane that drives me. Those that are forgiven much love much. Love God and then love people. Amen. It's God's heart to restore broken individuals, cities, and communities. It's God's heart to raise up the formerly broken, to be a part of the team that go back and to rebuild the cities, to spread revival across this land. The broken and marginalized that are reached and the, the teams that are raised up and the others that come from the outside to reinforce the Isaiah 58 is the ones that work to reach the broken. Isaiah 61 talks about the broken who are raised to life, and they become a missional community. right? But here's the thing. How many know we're really all broken? Yes. Some people just don't know it. Come on, somebody. When I was in solitary confinement, God spoke to me about an army that he was raising up, about an army of the lame, of, the, of outcasts, of ex-cons out of prisons, and folk off of prison yards that would go across this land and preach the unadulterated gospel of Jesus Christ with signs and wonders following. Come on. We have, we have an army rising up that, 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 that hates sin, that loves God, that wants to do nothing more than to see people reach, that has a kingdom mentality. Come on. We see the recent, this thing going on in Asbury and uh, what God is doing in prisons. And, 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 and man, it just really resonates with me. I believe we're on the verge. I sense that we are on the verge uh, of a mighty, mighty move of God in Springfield. Uh, and there already is, but even, even nationally. 
I mean, we need God. Look at the news. Look at what's going on around you. Be aware. We need Jesus. We don't need a better politician. We need God to invade this land. Compassion ministries, evangelism, evangelism, they're not mutually exclusive, right? We do both here. I remember in, uh, uh, when I was in Bible school, someone told me, you know, well, it's all about the evangelism, not the compassion. But how many know it's both and? That's Jesus-style ministry. Compassion and evangelism. Come on. Evangelism and divine healing and deliverance. Love God. Love people. If the church was doing her job, then people would not turn to the state and politicians to be their savior. You guys know this passage as the worship team comes up today. Thank you for uh, uh, sticking around uh, four minutes past noon today and not rushing out to go to Cracker Barrel. Three months before William Booth graduated to heaven in 1906, uh, he gave his final address to thousands of salvationists, which summed up it's 60 years of ministry in these words. He, he, uh, he's one of my heroes, uh, William Booth, the founder of the Foundation Army. They're not the same as they were in the beginning, but it said, he said this, while women weep as they do now, I'll fight. While children go hungry as they do now, I'll fight. While men go to prison in and out as they do now, I'll fight. While there is still a poor lost girl on the streets, I will fight. While addicts continue to overdose on fentanyl in zone one, I will fight. While children go hungry and have no fathers because they're incarcerated and have no mothers to care for them, I will fight. While people are getting shot in North Springfield, we will fight. Come on, somebody. While suicide is taking the lives of our friends and our family and the spirit of death is running rampant among our youth, we will fight. We will fight until there rem while there remains one dark soul far from God, we will fight. Come on. And we will fight to the very end. Come on. Who wants to be courageous? Who wants to be brave and fight for the cities of our God to fight for our families? Who's ready, Freedom City? Are you ready? We are just getting started. This is the movement that God has raised up. Come on. This is a year of miracles. We're going to begin to see God do things that we could only imagine, things that we only saw uh, from many of us that we saw from afar and we've been praying for. We're going to begin to see them in our lifetime. I don't know about you, but I'm not satisfied. You know what I mean? To, to just to read about revivals, just to read about William Booth, just to read about John Wesley, just to read about the Azusa Street Revival uh, 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 and Seymour and Parham. And I'm not satisfied just to watch the Jesus Revolution, Jesus Movement movie, but I want to see a revolution in my day, in my time. Oh, God, we've heard of your fame. We've heard of your works of old. And, oh, God, we ask that you would renew them in our day, in our day, that you would make them known. Oh, God, that you would rend the heavens, that you would come down. God, one more time. Una vez más, Dios, manda su fuego, su presencia, Dios. Avivamiento, send revival one more time, God. This is the movement that God has raised up. Let me just, I, I just want to, we're, we're going to have a moment just to come to the altar. And, and uh, if you, I feel like today that God was sparking something in people that maybe you already had the vision and wanted to be a part of it. You know I mean? Or maybe, and, and God is just reviving it in you. Or maybe you're here today and for the first time you're, you're feeling the spark of wanting to be a part of this movement. Or be, wanting to be a part of revival and a move of God. And we're going to give you some time at the end and we're just going to worship God. But right now, we want to give you an opportunity to respond to the grace of God. So I don't know how you came into this house today. You know, uh, 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 you may have come in here and one time you were walking with Jesus, but now you're not. Or maybe you're here today and you were, uh, 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 you, you've, never, you've never surrendered your life to the Lord. You know what I mean? I remember God set me free many years ago uh, 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 in a recovery home 24 years ago. You know what I mean? And then I relapsed for a season and God met me again in prison and set me free. So maybe you're here today and uh, uh, you've fallen away from God or you're here today and you've never surrendered your life to God. I want to give you an opportunity to respond to the grace of God. And watching online, 
you can just respond and we'll have a prayer worker get with you. You're in this house today and you say, Pastor, I don't want anyone else moving. I don't want anyone else moving. That's distracting. Close those doors. No one else moving. Have a little reverence for God in this season. Shut those doors. You're in this, you're in this house today or you're watching online. And man, this is a sacred moment. It's time to get right with God. God's tugging at your heart. If you're in this house today, you say, Pastor, that's me. I need to get right with God. I've, I've, been, I've been half in, half out. I need to be all in. Or you say, you know what, Pastor, I, 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 I've just never surrendered my life to Christ. I've heard a lot about him, but I've never surrendered my life to him. See, we live in the Bible Belt. Everybody's heard a lot about Jesus. Right? But Jesus said, uh, many will say to me on that day, didn't we attend church? Didn't we go to Freedom City? Didn't we do this and didn't we do that? Didn't we cast out demons even? He'll say, depart from me. I never knew you. That word know you, there's several different words for know. That word know you, you didn't, that they never knew me, was to know me personally. Not know about me, not just have facts of, but walk and be in relationship with me. You walk with Jesus. You talk with him. He's real to you. If you're in the house today and you say, Pastor, that's me. I'm going to count to three. I'm going to give you guys the opportunity to respond to the grace of God. God's tugging at hearts right now. One, two, you were living for Jesus at one time, but you, you're backslidden or you're half in, half out. Or you know what? You, you've never surrendered your life to Jesus. Three, from all over this house, raise your hand if that's you. We want to pray with you today. Anybody else? I'll see a hand in the back. Anybody else? Raise your hand. It's time to get right with God. You feel God tugging at your heart. Go ahead and come forward. If you raise your hands, we want to pray with you. Come on, give him a hand clap as he comes forward. Anybody else? Come on, give them a hand clap as they come forward. Let me pray with you guys if you came forward. Come here, let me pray with you. Let's just pray together. Just watch this. Just, all right, come on. Let's pray. Say, dear Jesus, forgive me. I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. I believe you're the Son of God, came to this earth, born of a virgin, lived a sinless life, and then died on the cross for my sin. And then you were resurrected to the right hand of the throne of God, and you poured out your spirit. Fill me with your spirit. Give me a hunger for your word. Give me a new mind. Give me a new heart. Give me dove's eyes for you. Single focus on you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's go ahead and prayer workers are going to walk with you out. I want to tell you your next steps. And then listen, we're going to close out in a song, but... Uh, this will also be a time that if you, you sense God uh, uh, drawing you to the vision of Freedom City and wanting to be a part of what God is doing, we'll have some time at the altar for you to surrender. And God bless you.